The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 484. Finally back, and... A forest of eyes watched Valet and the Iron Ridge Pegasus blinking like spectators of a sporting event. Valet's tension dropped slightly. This situation had a completely different feel from the last bar fight she started. This was an audience, not a free-for-all in the making. It was like the air held a silent agreement between everyone in the room but her that duels were serious business and not to be interrupted. Most everyone, at least. What are you, so kind of bounty hunter? Puddles asked curiously, ignoring the relieved-looking griffin and his pirate hat to wander over to Valet's side. That doesn't mean you'd be mad if I stole your kill, would it? She grinned at Valet, perfectly aware that wasn't what this was about, and it would definitely make things more interesting. Oh, Valet winced. The entire bar was still, everyone waiting with eager breath on either her or the Pegasus to make a move. Valet's judgment clammed up. What were her options? Punch things? She didn't want enemies, and a fight could get Puddles hurt. Or involve Puddles getting everyone else hurt. But the crowd looked like they wanted drama, and if the establishment cared, they'd probably intervene against her. Her best option should have been to run, but Puddles wanted trouble and wouldn't run with her. Out of my way, heretic scum, a crabby entitled voice snapped, and Valet hopped out of the way as a vaguely familiar gold-plumed griffiness with two fresh tankards under her wings and no investment into confrontation whatsoever tried to shove her on her way past. Valet ducked into the shadows, watching Puddles closely as the Iron Ridge Pegasus evaluated whether this new griffin was back up or just didn't care. The Gryphoness tried to slide into the same booth as the older Gryphon Puddles had been bothering, until Puddles bounced up alongside her and crashed straight into her side, giggling. Hiya, Missy! Are we shoulder bumping? Puddles likes- Crah! The Gryphoness whirled, clamping a talon around Puddles' neck and hoisting her completely off the floor. Are you trying to make me spill my drinks? Watch your manners, whelp! Ah, Puddles screamed, crying and kicking and making a show of being helpless. Valet! Help, Puddles! Oh, bananas, Valet growled heavily, taking her eyes off the Pegasus to turn toward the Gryphon. The Pegasus instantly slunk away, but the audience didn't even care, the level of tension and eagerness in the room going up with every second. Okay, lemon bag, the filly's an idiot, and I'd really like to leave, but I'm kinda in charge of her, so please let her go. The Gryphoness raised an eyebrow at her. Or what? The ballet cracked her wing joints. The other bar patrons wanted a show. This Gryphon was enough of a jerk, she might just give them one. Or I'll take you to town. Don't! Her cutie mark flared briefly, and she sidestepped a thrown empty mug from behind, shooting a glare in its direction and seeing the Pegasus who had supposedly snuck off. Hey! I'm not here for you! Shoot! She glared back at the Gryphoness. So, name? I don't like beating up nobodies. As if I'd give your kind such an honor. The Gryphoness smirked, pressed her talons tighter around Puddles' neck, and drew a single drop of blood. Hit the floor, wings where I can see them, or you're... What, newbie? A hooded figure was leaning over from the adjacent booth. Hark, sister! That's, um, really not a bear you want to pick fights with. My eldritch senses have spoken! The Gryphoness flicked at him with a talon. Shut! <laughs> Puddles drawn out her rhetoric with more crying. <laughs> Help! Shut up and stop sniveling! I'm teaching a lesson! The crowd began to cheer as the Gryphoness flung Puddles downward, slamming her into the ground. Valet lunged as she was distracted, trying to jump over her for a blow. But the moment Puddles was within reach of the ground, she flipped and tapped it with a hoof. She still landed hard, but a lightning bolt of ice cracked along the wood floor and exploded directly beneath her attacker, sending an ice sculpture of a clenched talon rocketing upward and punching the Gryphoness heavily in the gut. Wood! At exactly the same time, Valet finished her flip, 
balling her forehooves and bringing a doubled-up blow down at the Gryffonis's lower back, sandwiching her between two heavy hits. Horribly winded, the Gryffonis gagged, losing her grip on Puddles and allowing her to scramble to her hooves. Yay! Puddles cheered. Beautiful is the best! Uh, the hooded stallion who had worn the Gryffonis earlier took a step back, standing on the seat of his booth. You, uh, fail to heed my advice. Captain, I suggest we run for the hills. Glorious retreat! Crash! The table-side window shattered as the cannonball threw in a reckless display of cowardice and intelligence, garnering a cheer from the crowd and a stamping of tankers being banged against wood. Valet glanced at the hole left in a window. Something about his voice seemed familiar, too. Whatever. She had a Gryffoness to fight. Rawr! The Gryffoness rolled back upright, spitting and drawing two tiny curved swords, puddles now free. Okay, look, you're obviously insane with anger, so Valet only had time to take two steps toward her before the Gryffoness was tackled by gleeful puddles. He jumped out the window! Did you see? <laughs> it looked like fun. We should do it, too. The kid's playing with her, one of the spectators whispered to another. She looks like a fool, but she's more dangerous than the bat is. Money? The other replied. My wager is on the bat to take her out before the kid. Then, the older, black-hooded griffin was at Valet's side. Let your quarries go, Belinda. They'd be too much for you to handle in such a state. Belinda only squawked and struggled, completely unable to break Puddles' hug. Valet didn't even intervene. The less she did, the better. Come on, Bertie! Let's go for the window! As Belinda flailed and whipped around with her sword, Puddles touched one talon with her hoof, freezing her grip to the hilt and rendering her unable to evenly stand on it. Belinda tripped. In the moment Puddles was close enough to touch the ground, she did, and a thin pillar of ice spiked up, catapulting both her and the beleaguered Gryffoness into the air. Puddles' aim was true, and they hit another window, crashing and both breaking through. Arr! The black Gryffon walked up beside Valet and shook his head. At least one of those is going on me tab. You best get your companion and leave, heretic, or you'll be stuck paying for the other. You know what? Valet gave him a suspicious look. I think that's actually good advice. See ya, old dude. She flipped through the air as well, vaulting expertly for the existing hole in the window and dropped to the street below. What? Valet hit the dirt road with a puff of dust, taking a second to straighten up. Puddles was prancing in a happy circle as Belinda lay in a heap on the ground, looking significantly scratched up by breaking the window. The hooded stallion was annoyingly hovering over her, his own cloak cut in places by the glass to reveal a girly lavender coat and a pair of wings beneath. Wallowing Wendigos, you've been hexed with fiendish ice magic! Alas, this is far beyond my ken. I recommend... Uh... He looked up, realizing Valet had joined him outside. Oh, I'm so screwed, aren't I? Valet tapped her head. Jog my memory. I've had a lot go down lately. Do I know you? Yeah! <laughs> Letting out a cowardly battle cry, the stallion spread his wings and flew for the end of the alley, trying his best to flee. His best wasn't good enough. Valet's curiosity overrode her desire to leave well enough alone, and she shot after him, overtaking the Pegasus in a matter of seconds. Gotcha, she crowed, grabbing him and flipping them both to the ground. They bounced once, leaving the stallion on his back with his face exposed to the sun. A jagged, red and black goatee and equally ridiculous mane tarnished Valet's sight as the caught stallion stared sheepishly up at her. Ah, uh, heya? Oh, bananas, not you again, Valet groaned at realization. It's two continents and an ocean not far enough away to avoid us? Thanks for nothing in the mines, by the way. Something tells me my day is about to get real bad, real fast. <laughs> uh, Ver Ver? Uh, how grinned back up at her. But look at the bright side. You finally get to see me again. It's your old friend, Pancake. <laughs> His voice cracked to a squeaky whisper. Please don't kill me. End of chapter 484.